This is Grant Lovdell, Lab Manager, Dyn Technologies. Today I'm in the Sprinkler Lab to discuss loading. I hope to address three questions today. What is loading? Why is loading important to look for? And how much loading is too much? You will notice in NFPA 25, the standard for inspection, testing, and maintenance of water-based fire protection systems. The Chapter 5 on sprinklers, under Section 2, Inspections, says the following. Sprinklers shall be inspected from the floor annually. And any sprinkler that shows signs of the following shall be replaced. Leakage, corrosion detrimental to sprinkler performance, physical damage, loss of fluid in the glass bulb, loading detrimental to sprinkler performance, and paint other than applied by the sprinkler manufacturer. So any sprinkler, not the whole system, just any sprinkler that shows signs of loading, detrimental to sprinkler performance must be replaced. So what's loading? If you're using NAPA 25, you probably already flipped to Chapter 3 definitions to look for loading. There isn't a definition there. Dime defines loading as debris on the head. Any foreign material that wasn't there when it was made, except paints or corrosion. Now to the next part of the statement. Any sprinkler that shows signs of loading detrimental to sprinkler performance must be replaced. Detrimental to sprinkler performance. What are they getting at with this statement? This statement actually gets to why it's important to check for loading, and NAPA 25 has more information on this in the appendix. According to 25, the appendix of 5.2.1.1.1 says the following. The conditions described in this section can have a detrimental effect on performance of sprinklers by adversely impacting water distribution patterns, insulating thermal elements delaying operation, or otherwise rendering the sprinkler inoperable or ineffective. Severely corroded or loaded sprinklers should be reported as a deficiency or impairment as part of the visual inspection and designated to be replaced. Notice the word severely there. Such sprinklers could be affected in their distribution or other performance characteristics not addressed by routine sample testing. So, the performance of the sprinkler could actually be affected by any debris on it. For instance, debris could be stuck on the deflector, which could then alter the water distribution pattern. You might not get water where you want it, even if the sprinkler goes off. Also, debris around the release mechanism could actually insulate it, making the response time to that head much longer than desired. In extreme cases, such as when the loading is sticky or corrosive substance, the loading could even prevent the head from releasing as it holds the water seal in place. So now, we know why it's important to check for loading, but how do we know if loading is detrimental or not? How much is too much? After all, sprinkler heads are not tested annually. Heads only need to be sent in for testing in accordance with 5.3.1, which has several different testing intervals, none of which are annual. This is why I'm here today. I'm going to show you sprinklers with different amounts of loading and their response times are impacted. Today I have five sets of four prepared. The first set has no loading. The second set of four heads has very small amounts of loading, and each set after that has more and more loading. I plan on showing these four of each type in an effort to show repeatability on this rough demo. The head we are using today for all these tests is a reliable F1 FR series head from 2016. It looks like it's the RA1414. It's a quick response head, 155 degree Fahrenheit head. The loading I will be using today is just some ordinary dust bunnies from home. We are running these heads at 275 degrees Fahrenheit today, that's 135 degrees Celsius, with an airflow of about 2.5 meters per second. You will notice that this environment I'm putting these heads in is quite a bit higher than the listed temperature. There should be no problem with these heads going off unless they are impaired in some way. The amount of pressure I'm applying is 5 PSI, as called out in the appendix of NFPA 25. No water will be used for this testing. If you want to learn more about the machine I'll be using today, our website has more information, including a video on how the machine works. My plunge test oven is already calibrated and ready to go. My test plates have already been prepped as well, so let's get started. My first run will be with no loading. I'm hoping you'll be able to hear the sound of these glass balls breaking, but I'll also call out these times as we go. You can hear the machines a little bit loud, so you might not be able to hear it. The timer will also sound as soon as the ball breaks. The timer is set up to a sensor that can detect pressure loss in the line that I'm using to pressurize the head. Note that these heads should be going off in about 17 seconds. So, for my first run, no loading on this head. You can see, fairly clean. We're going to do a couple of these. So, I've got five pounds of 
compressor, I've got my flow, and I've got my machine at the temperature, so let's plunge it. Again, these heads should go off in about 17 seconds. I would expect to go off before that with no loading. Hopefully you heard the pop. You can also hear the timer in the background. 12.5 seconds. Well below the 17 seconds required. Now for my second head in this run. Again, no loading. Fourteen point two seconds. Again, well below the seventeen second requirement. Third run, no loading. Thirteen point four seconds. You can see a little bit of variability in the hash. Nothing to be too concerned about. That is fairly typical for even brand brand new manufacturer heads. And the last one of this group, again, no loading. You'll notice I constantly check, making sure I keep my 5 PSI. Over here, I'm able to monitor my flow, making sure I keep that 2.5 meters per second. And this equipment is very accurate at keeping the temperature I want it, but I do always check, make sure I'm at that 135 degrees C testing temp that I'm doing today. Here, I'm going to go off 12.9 seconds. Not all of these heads would easily pass the requirement of 17 seconds. Now, we're going to do a couple of heads, just a little bit of loading. If you want to see a better picture of these heads and how much loading I'm talking about, there will be a link attached to this video to show an example report and a link with example pictures that you'd receive with the dyeing testing process. These pictures are up close and you'll be able to see the loading a little bit better. I will also run them by the camera just to show you what I'm talking about. So first one, just a little bit of loading. You can see there, I just got a little bit. Just to dust money on there. It's going to probably sit toward the top when I flip it upside down in the pendant position. So, with this small amount of loading, you might have a little bit of insulation. A little bit of the bowl might be blocked from that heat, but I would still expect this one to go off in the car all the time. Again, keep in mind the 12 to 14 seconds we were seeing with the brand new head. Seventeen point four seconds. That would fail. Even that small dust bunny was able to push that response time up past the requirement. You can see when I took this out, that bulb has released. The water seal did clear, but it took longer than the required amount of time. Well, let's compare that to another one. Again, small amount of running. I tried to get about the same amount on each of these. Just a small one dust bunny on that. So this stuff funny here is kind of on the back side, so I'm going to get it when I'm testing into the airflow to show that insulation effect. So I did there, position it so the airflow hanging is going to get that dust funny first instead of the release mechanism. Plunge it. Again, just keep an eye on the pressure flow and temperature. It's still good. Only 14 seconds there. This could be a situation where the dust bunny just wasn't covering enough. You see I had to replace it a little bit. It might not have been a lot of coverage on it. What we're seeing with the small amount of dust bunnies though, is even that is enough to possibly affect the result. Let's try some more. This one here is an interesting one. Again, I got a little bit, but it's kind of spread out through the whole bulb. Only 12.6 seconds. So that coverage on that release mechanism wasn't enough to affect it, push it up past that 17 second mark. And we got the last one here. This I would consider light loading and the fact that I can't even keep them on the head. Again, it's just a small amount toward the base there. Remember what I said in the standard, severely loaded heads, or severely corroded if you're talking about corrosion. Again, I'd consider these light, but that is a gray area. You will have to decide, is this going to affect my performance or not? 
12.7 seconds. Again, well below the 17. That first head I ran must have had enough coverage. We can again go back in the video and look at the picture. It must have been enough to insulate that element. So we'll do our third set here. This amount of loading is probably where you're going to start to see. Uh, should I get up there and blow this off? Should I replace the sprinkler? Is the performance effective? We saw one in the first set. We'll see how many we see in this set. So at first set, I'd say maybe about a quarter of the ball was blocked from the flow of the heat. This one, I'd say either half to two thirds was probably blocked. I just went about 17 seconds. Time on that one, 18.2 seconds. We saw this before at the first set, though, where I had one that had quite a bit. Let's run some more and see. Again, this set of sprinklers, set of four, has got quite a bit more loading. This might be typical after years and years of collecting dust and nothing being done about it. Only 15 seconds there. Again, go back and look at the video. How much loading was on each of these heads? Third sprinkler in this set. Again, had quite a bit of loading. This is probably the gray area I'm talking about between light and severe. You know, we're starting to see it kind of get close to that fast fail line. 16.8 seconds. And the last one in this set, quite a bit of loading. Sixteen point eight seconds. It was enough. This would have passed the requirement. On to the next set. Now these are pretty severely loaded, I would say. You can see there's coverage all almost all around. You can see a little bit of air might get in there. Let's see how these do. But personally, if I were looking at that, I would consider that severe and I would take the required action in the standard. Again, it is a subjective observation. Is it too much loading? Effect performance. This one's going to fail by quite a bit here. We have 29.1 seconds. Well above the 17. This would have affected the performance greatly. You can see even my dust bunny is still kind of hanging off the edge there. So what we're seeing, if you go back in these videos, try to look at these, these uh, captures that I'm showing you of how much loading is on there. Try to get a good idea of, well, is this going to impact it or not? You can see when I rotate it this way, the ball doesn't cover it very much, so I'm actually going to position it where the heat flow is hitting this. Again, just to show you if that thermal element is insulated, how much is it affecting the performance? The time is Again, well above 20 seconds, I'm at 23.9 seconds. So we're seeing these fail pretty regularly. Third one in this set. You can see in the video here, my timer and my temperature. You might not be able to see it. The machine is able to keep it within that temperature that I want. You can see the time here. 18.1 seconds. So if you go back and look at how much of that was loaded, not maybe as much in the coverage there, but enough to fail it. Alright, my last one in this set. Again, severely loaded. Got the two sides there. I think I'm going to do this side. It looks like this side's a little bit more blocked. Twenty-eight seconds ago, well above seventeen seconds. All right, now on to my last set here. Now these ones, you know, just playing around a bit, having some fun. Extremely loaded. I packed that stuff in there so tight. I'd imagine these are going to go off quite a long time.
we might be here a while. Again, I have four of this. If these are taking an extreme amount of time, I might just cut it short to a couple. We're already above 30 seconds. 32 seconds, almost twice as long as the requirement. We'll do one more just to show you. Again, just packed in there. Wow, this one's even going past 40. 46.6 seconds. So you can see how frequent that's a vacuum of the result. You can see, too. Now, the water, when that would have released, would push that out. But it's just dangling there. It's insulating that head so much. I think we'll cut it short there. He said they're taking quite a bit. I don't want to take too much of your time. I hope this gives you a little sense into how loading does impact the performance and why it's important to check for. I want to touch upon one last thing in NFT825. It does give you a way to avoid replacement of these heads. Again, in the appendix, page 90, 2017, in lieu of replacing sprinklers that are loaded with or coated with dust, it is permitted to clean sprinklers with the compressed air or vacuum, provided that the equipment does not touch the sprinkler. We don't want to touch the sprinkler and break the bulb or the release mechanism. You have a lot of water damage on your hands, but you are allowed to use the compressed air. You grab a can of duster, or if you have a compressor with a nozzle, try to clean that off. I would say even if you are doing the testing, the periodical testing, try to do that before you send it to the lab. The appendix touches on that as well. It should pass the visual inspection before you send it to Dyne or any other testing laboratory. So do you feel you might have too much loading? Again, probably best to err on the safe side. You've seen it affect the performance. Either replace those individual heads, or clean them off. If you have questions about what we discussed today, feel free to contact Dine. Our contact information will be linked in this video. Thank you for your time today.